If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Monday, April 1st, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Every Monday in April here on the Morning Swim Show will be Masters Monday and we'll be joined by a master swimmer with a great story to tell. Today in the Finis Monitor, we'll be joined by Masters World Record holder Leslie Livingston, who just broke one of her own short course world records a couple of weeks ago. And Leslie joins us now on Skype. Leslie, it's good to see you again. How are you today? Hey, Jeff. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, good to have you. Uh, congratulations on the world record. Thank you. 50 butterfly short course meters. Remind us again what the time was? 29.25. That is fast. Very, very fast. So I understand that training wasn't optimal before this meet. Can you give us some more detail about that? Yeah, I was, uh, I unfortunately had the flu in February and it was a really long version that lasted three or four weeks. So I missed a big chunk of training and you know, the training I did was more focused on 50s than 100s. It was kind of maintenance, some maintenance training. Well, a lot of people say you can kind of, even if you're not training well, you could fake it through a 50. <laughs> right, and I think that was the case here. So you actually were really close to your world record too in the 50 back, so you gotta be pretty happy knowing that, you know, with, with being out sick, that you're still, you know, able to approach your best times. I was. I was really pleased to see I still had my speed. You know, I think I have a really good speed base from years of the HIT training. And uh, I only rested three days for the meet, so I was pretty happy with that. Now you're going to Short Course Masters Nationals next month in Indianapolis, correct? Yes. So you got to be pretty happy knowing that, you know, after this world record swim that you had, that everything's going to pretty much fall into place. Training's going well, I would assume. Yes, the last couple of weeks have been great. I am going on vacation next week, so I probably won't train quite as much as usual, but um, I think I should be pretty solid by nationals. And again, it's, it's, you're, you're not to say you're only a 50 swimmer, but a lot of, all of your world records have been in the 50, so that's where a lot of people are going to be looking at. One thing that is really exciting to watch when you swim is your underwaters. They're just absolutely phenomenal. You're going to almost 15 meters the whole time. Um, how much of your training each day is focused on underwater kicking? Well, a huge percentage of it. I mean, I, I definitely do just dedicated kick sets, you know, all out and at 100 pace. But, but anytime I'm swimming, I'm trying to be underwater for a lot, large portion of that swim. So I basically practice underwaters with every swim I do in practice. Uh, how much of it do you, uh, I know a lot of people who are strong underwater, people usually use a lot of fin work. Do you do a lot of fin work? Yeah, I do a lot of fin work, lots of fin work, sometimes with the monofin, but usually with just my long blade fins. And something that really kind of strikes me is something that's really important for people who are really good underwater is not just having strong legs, but good lung capacity. I mean, is that something that you really try to work on as well, having being able to not go into oxygen debt, even on a 50, which can happen. I mean, you're underwater more than half the race. Yeah, it definitely did. It actually happened a little bit to me in my 50 back uh, last weekend because I was under 30 meters. I do hypoxic training, but I really think of it as CO2 tolerance training. You're just, you know, getting used to holding your breath underwater. And I, do, I did lose a little bit of that when I was out sick in February, but I think it comes back in a few weeks. Well, so, yeah, you do, you do have to practice it. Talk about a, a typical hypoxic, hypoxic set for you. I will sometimes do a set of um, 16 to 20 shooters, which are 25s underwater, and I'll do those on about the 40 seconds with fins. And sometimes I will do broken hundreds, where I rest just 10 seconds at each 25 and stay under at least 15 meters. That's kind of a race simulation type set. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty important to be able to do that. Um, now, I understand you train alone. 
Yeah, how, I do. How, what is it like to be to to be able to go at race pace, knowing that you don't have anybody there pushing you every day? Yeah. Well, I'm used to it. You know, um, I train. I do solely hit training. So working out with a masters team is not really conducive, you know, to my events. I don't think most masters te teams don't train sprinters. So I really have to work out alone. And I am just used to pushing myself in practice. You know, it just comes over time. It, has there ever been a day where you're like, it would be great to, you know, hop over and find a masters team that'll at least let me, you know, train with it for a little bit just so I, I'm not just talking to myself? Yes, yeah, sometimes. Um, I do occasionally drop in on my uh, team Patriot Masters practices. Once in a while, I'll do that. And uh, occasionally, I'll train with a training partner or something, which makes it definitely makes it more fun. Now, you're in the uh, 50 to 54 age group, very competitive age group. You got Carlin Pipes, who's always strong there. Yeah. Uh, does having her and others uh, kind of get you extra motivation every day in workout and when you race? Oh, definitely. Yeah. It, it seems like a lot of people aged up in the last year. So 50-54 is pretty stacked now. And, uh, oh, it definitely does. You know, I know who my competitors are in all events and, you know, I want to be able to hang with them or beat them. So definitely is motivating. What kind of goals are you setting for yourself for Masters Nationals next month? Ah, uh, well, I've tried not to set, you know, too many unrealistic goals, you know, what I think might be unrealistic based on my training loss and going on vacation. I'm not sure I can go any faster in the 50 back and 50 fly. I set national records at uh, Greensboro last year in those, and those were pretty fast. Um, but I haven't swum 50 breast and 50 free untapered, uh, completely tapered in a couple years. So I'm a little kind of excited to see what I can do in those events too. Are you going to kind of expand and do some distance events, 100 free or something like that? I am going to do the 100 back and 100 IM at Nationals. I did swim all 500s in short course meters this year. Okay, okay. Well, we just want you to kind of feel like you can expand your horizons. There are other distances than a 50. Yeah, no 200s, though. Yeah, I understand that. Definitely don't want to do any 200s if you don't have to. It's right. Masters. Right. Well, Leslie, thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations on the world record. You're starting off 2013 on the right foot. I know it kind of maybe started out with the flu, but you're, you are definitely look like you're uh, headed in the right direction. We're looking forward to seeing how you do in Indianapolis. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the meet, too. All right, we'll see you there. Okay, bye-bye. All right, so that was Masters World Record holder Leslie Livingston joining us for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. We'll bring you another interview with a Masters swimmer next Monday as part of this month's Masters Monday series. And we also invite you to pick up a copy of the April issue of Swimming World Magazine, where we've picked our top 12 Masters World Swimmers of the Year. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.